thank you very much. <clears throat> I'm now speaking about intramedullary nails, short intramedullary nails for this type of fractures. We treat only older patients. Uh, we, you have seen the numbers before. We are more or less in the same numbers. Four to eight percent of all uh, fractures is the third most common injury in patients over 65 years. These are our patients in uh, aging population has more. They have, as uh, Vadel tells you, a higher level of osteoporosis, and the incidence in Europe you can see is. Uh, near 400 patients uh, per 100,000 uh, inhabitants, and it's uh, more high in patients over eight years old. 80% uh, uh, are not displaced. Uh, they, there we are agree. They are need a non-operative ma management. Uh, uh, conservative treatment, not as uh, Professor Badel says, no treatment, it's not the same. And uh, the treatment of the displaced fractures, as, as you have heard, is uh, controversial. The, it, this depends on these uh, displaced fractures on uh, uh, some factors. The first one is the poor bone stock in elderly patients, which makes uh, fixation difficult uh, for uh, key wires or for plates or for screws. It's always, uh, display is always difficult. The tuberosities are displaced and when they are very displaced then it's difficult to fix them. And uh, you can have also combination and a vascular necrosis if you touch the vascular, so the media vascular supply, and also stiffness. It's very important if you don't move from the beginning, then the shoulder will be uh, stiff. So we think it's not a good resolved fracture. Uh, if you look at the literature, then you can find this uh, Cochrane revision when they uh, uh, say there is insufficient evidence to establish what is the best method of surgical treatment for these displayed fractures. So uh, if we want to use a nail, we can use it for two-part surgical neck fractures, three-part, I think not for four-part fractures. And if you use a nail, then uh, the fixation has to be secure. The rotat rotational stability of the humeral head has to be uh, uh, important. And uh, we have always uh, the danger of an implant failure. Uh, is, and it's not effective, this nail, if the insertion point is incorrect. Uh, like in this place, if, they insert, uh, if you use a fracture area to put in the nail, and uh, if there is a big uh, a lateral metaphysis comminution, then that you don't use the nail. This is a case with a very uh, small head fragment. We put a nail inside, and the head was... Uh, this place, so we have to change it to a prosthesis. Uh, if you look another time to the literature, then you can find uh, papers uh, who are against the nails. This is uh, this uh, paper from injury says uh, the study does not support the use of this device of technique in three-part displaced proximal fractures. This is another uh, paper against, also from. Nolan and Nowinski, they say the nails have a, a very high percentage of unsatisfactory result using Polarus, and uh, the device violates the rotatory cuff, so it's uh, recommend, uh, they recommend against. But we find also uh, papers who sustain uh, the use of nails, this one, uh, uh, use the stable locket intermedial nail, nail and uh, uh, the conclusion is that patients who were managed with locket angular stable nail uh, had a reliable fracture healing and a favorable 
clinical outcome. And this is another one where they compare plates and nails and they found uh, that the uh, rate of complication is uh, less with locking intramedullary nails. And for the other literature revision is this experimental work uh, with uh, two-part fractures immobilized with plates or nails and uh, submitted to bending and torsion test. And the conclusion of this uh, work is that the intramedullary nail load carriers were biomechanically superior when compared to the plate system. So we uh, think nail is a good solution. If we look at our own, our own uh, uh, cases, we have used Kirchner wires at the beginning and to the, until 2005. You use a lot of them, like uh, Professor Wolpin, but we found in all the people that uh, nail, uh, the wires go out and the fractures redisplace. So we don't use it more because uh, there were, we have a uh, high uh, rate of complication with uh, Kirchner wires. And, uh, then we use also plates and the Polaris nail, but uh, it's not uh, without complication. And the conclusion is that if we look at uh, the different uh, cases or the different uh, way of treatment, all have a 33% of complications, you plates, uh, nails, and wires. So uh, this was uh, uh, a, a conclusion of this, uh, of this work. Then we use uh, the nail, and uh, we, use, uh, we are presenting a striped nail because uh, we think it's better. This uh, multi-lock uh, nail had, has also a lot of screws. You can put them in different places. There are lateral screws to fix the grit, grit and tuberosity. Then uh, anterior, anterior posterior uh, screw for fixing the lesser tuberosity. And uh, it's important, this uh, oblique screw which is uh, parallel to the calcar and uh, uh, fix very well the rest of the head uh, if the head is very osteoporotic and then you can uh, fix them distally. Well, the difference between a stride and a curved nail is that the curved nail uh, enters laterally where bone is uh, more osteoporotic. We have less bone. It doesn't have a sufficient uh, a place to, to attach, and if you go medially, then there is more bone, and it's, uh, the, uh, the anchorage of the nail is better than the lateral. Also, if you compare the entry point, then you can see that if you use curved nails, it can enter through the tuberosity fracture and displace it, and has not a good uh, uh, it doesn't uh, be strong enough in this place. And if you use a striped nail, then you enter the, the head and uh, it will be held better. No, this is the striped nails. And what is very important is that the striped nail doesn't enter on the supraspinatus uh, foot spring and avoids the rotatory cuff uh, insertion. And the lesson we put the patients in this beach chair position, uh, which uh, allows a very good uh, access to the uh, shoulder, uh, but uh, it's, uh, you have to take more time to put the patient in this way. And sometimes uh, the gravity uh, puts the diaphysis uh, dorsally and you have to control the position of the humerus uh, during the introduction of the, uh, of the nail. We make a very short incision in line with a greater tuberosity. Here you see the incision, and then uh, the nail has to uh, enter in line with the diaphysis. And you have to go as medially as you can. I, I don't know, it has not, because uh, if you look at that uh, uh, during the operation, you think you are quite medial, and when you look at the X-ray, the post-op uh, X-ray, then you see that. Uh, frequently the nail is most lateral than what you thought you have put in and where it has to be. So it's important. This is an example of this case. 
we put the nail, uh, and this are the this is the good result of the of the of the nail. And then we have done a prospective comparative study between the polarus nail, which is an angular nail, and the straight nail, the multi-lock nail, uh, with uh, it's a short series uh, of cases, 26 in each series, and we found that uh, in the polarus. Uh, Series, there's a case of non union. The multi lock, they all healed. The uh, angular uh, situation of the is better for the multi lock than for the polarus nail. And these are the satisfaction, satisfactory uh, radiographic reduction. You see, with a straight nail, is a little better than with a curved nail. And if you look for the functional results, then we found that the straight nail has uh, much better results than the curved nail, I think, because the entry point doesn't touch the supraspinatus tendon, and the recovery of the shoulder is better than with the other nail. So uh, this is our conclusion. At a, they have a good uh, union rate of union in and the rotatory cuff dis, uh, dysfunction and pain is uh, can be minimized with the use of this new generation of nails. And uh, the advantages of this intramedullary nail is that we can get an anatomical reduction of the tuberosities and restore the next the neck soft angle, the entry point is away from the supraspinatus, so we have no problems with the rotatory cuff, or less problems, and uh, the proximal locking screws are away from the articular surface, the axillary nerve, and the vessels. This is an image of an anatomical preparation of study with cadavers to see where the screws enter, and you can see the axillary nerve uh, lies beneath the screws, but is not touched by the screws, so there we have no problems with this lesion. So this is another time the same thing. Close reduction, minimal disruption, less damage to the humeral head, reduce intraoperative blood loss, which in this so old ladies is always important, uh, shorter operation time, and uh, that uh, we can do, uh, get an early mobilization and rehabilitation of these cases. Thank you very much. <laughs>